So our next concept is profit. <clears throat> so I'm sure everybody is acquainted with the word profit. When we hear profit, you know, we think about surplus, we think about gain, we think about uh, having more than what we invested. So profit simply refers to the reward that an entrepreneur or a businessman receives for gathering all the other three factors of production, that is land, labor, and capital. When you bear that risk and take that time to gather factors of production to create goods and services, your reward as an entrepreneur is called profit. But that is not going to be our focus because that is more theoretical. We are going to be talking more on some the statistical, uh, we are going to pay, pay more attention on the statistical part of profit. So what is profit? calculated as. Profit is calculated as, I'm going to be aggregating profit with this, profit is calculated as total revenue minus total cost. <clears throat> when you take your revenue you invested minus what you spent to produce that good, then when you take your revenue you have generated, sorry, minus what you invested to produce those goods, it will give you profit. And profit can exist in three forms. When you subtract total revenue minus total cost, it can give you a positive answer. And if you have a positive answer, even if it is positive 10 francs, we call it in economics abnormal profits. Abnormal profits. And then, if the difference between total revenue and total cost gives you a negative answer, it means that that is a loss. And then if the difference between total revenue and total cost gives you zero, that is to say revenue is equal to cost, you've gotten back exactly how much you invested, then we say that you have normal profit. Normal profit or break-even profit. That is a break-even situation. That is normal profit or break-even. So we have profit can be calculated in totals, that is total profit as we've seen. We have average profit. They may ask you to calculate average profit. Simple. What you do is you just take your total profit and then you divide by the quantity. The quantity relating to that profit maximizing output level. So total profit divided by output gives you an average profit. Then we have marginal profit. Marginal profit. Marginal profit is simply the difference between marginal revenue and marginal cost. Okay, let us have a practical example on the concept of profit. And um, let us assume that the price, let's say given the price of 10,000 francs, that is the price of this firm, given the price of 10,000 francs, and considering the cost situation of this firm, answer the following equations. We have our total cost, which is in thousands. We have output from one to seven. We are asked to calculate the profit maximizing output level. We are asked to determine the amount of profit. And then we are asked to also determine the type of market structure under which this firm is operating. Just three equations. Profit maximizing output level, the amount of profit, the market structure under which we are operating. Simple. This is how you go about it. You need to look for total revenue because we know that profit is calculated as TR, that's total revenue minus total cost. So we need to look for total revenue. And to look for total revenue, we need to know our price. You see, our price here has been given as 10,000 francs. And Remember here, total cost is in thousands. So what you do is, you remove the thousands and write everything in tens. So this 10 here means 10,000, 12 here means 12,000, 20, 20,000, and so on and so forth. So our price is constant at 10. All right? We have 10 all through. And then we look for total revenue, which is of course in thousands as well. And we know that total revenue is calculated by multiplying price by output. We already have our price and we have output. So we can easily have total revenue. 1 times 10 gives us 10. 2 times 10, 23 times 10, 33 times 
I mean 4 times 10, 40, 50, 60 and 70. So we look for our profits, our aggregate profit by this and we know that everything is in thousands and our profit is calculated by taking the difference between total revenue and total cost. So indiscriminate of the order in which total cost and total revenue appear. Do not forget the formula is TR minus TC. Here we have total cost appearing first and total revenue next. So do not make the mistake of taking total cost minus total revenue. Your answer will be negative. All your values will be wrong. So it is always total revenue minus total cost. So we have 10 minus 10. That gives us the first profit is zero. We have 20 minus 12, we have 8, all right? We have 30 minus 20, 10. We have 40 minus 30, which is 10 as well. <coughs> we have 50 minus uh, 45, which gives us 5. We have 60 minus 66, which gives us 6. 70 minus 91 which gives us, oh sorry, this was negative 6, that is 60 minus 66, is negative, and then we have 70 minus 91, this gives us negative 21. So, the question is, what is the profit maximizing output level? That is to say, what is the output level that corresponds to the maximum amount of profit? That is what that means, simple. So, what is the highest profit here? The highest profit is 10 and we have 10 at two output levels, the 10th and the 4th output level. So what do we do? Do we say that the profit maximizing output level is 3 and 4? No, we cannot say that. We cannot say the profit maximizing output level is 3 and 4. If we say that, we will be wrong. Though profit is positively highest at both output levels, 3 and 4, then we need to choose one. How do we choose one? Should we choose the third or the fourth? How do we go about it? We simply know the best output level by calculating marginal revenue and marginal cost. The profit maximizing output level in principle under theory of the firm is that output level where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. We are going to see the reason later. Whenever marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, that is your profit maximizing output level. Take note. So, since we have profit positively highest at two levels and we do not know whether we should choose either of them, we simply go ahead by calculating MR and MC. When we are done calculating MR and MC, one of them will be equal at an output level. So let us see what that gives us. Let's calculate marginal revenue. Everything is in thousands thousands. The formula for marginal revenue is change in total revenue all over change in output. So we take 10 minus nothing that exists before 10, that is 10, divided by 1 minus nothing. So 10 divided by 1 gives us 10. We have 20 minus 10, that gives us 10, divided by 1, that gives us 10. So our marginal revenue is going to be 10 all through. Why? Because we are under perfect competition and marginal revenue is constant and the same with average revenue. Marginal cost now is gotten by change in total cost all over change in output. So we have our total cost here. So we take 10 minus nothing or minus zero divided by 1 minus nothing. That gives us 10. But if you like, you put a dash. It's fine. Because that is the first level. There was no value before that. So it's fine if you put a dash. It's accepted. The next, 12 minus 10. That is 2 divided by 1. We have 2. 20 minus 12. That is 8 divided by 1. 8. 30 minus 20. 10 divided by the difference here is 1. We have 10. And then we have 45 minus 30, that is 15, divided by 1, that gives us 15. And then we have 66 divided by, uh, sorry, 66 plus uh, minus 45, that gives us uh, 
18 plus 6, 21. Okay, 21. We have 91 minus this, that is 24. Okay, 24. So you can see clearly that it is very easy for us to choose the profit, the best profit maximizing output level according to this principle. Profit is positively highest at the foot output level, same as the tech output level. But at the foot output level, what do you notice? You notice that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So that is how you choose the best profit maximizing output level by calculating MR and MC at that highest profit level and choosing the output that they are equal at. Thank you very much. marginal revenue with total revenue. We want to see the relationship that actually exists between these two revenue concepts in the imperfect market situation or in the real world situation. What is that relationship that exists between total revenue and marginal revenue? Diagrammatically speaking, we have the total revenue. We have the total revenue. shapes like this. This is revenue and this is output. Do not forget to label your axis first. And then we have the marginal revenue that is downward sloping like that. <coughs> and the first relationship that exists between total revenue and marginal revenue is when the total revenue of a firm under imperfect competition is rising, marginal revenue will be falling but positive. Total revenue is rising and marginal revenue is falling but positive. Let me separate this in three uh, subsections. <coughs> this is the left hand side represents section one, then this line is section two, then after this line we have section three. Now before this line to your left you have <coughs> total revenue rising and marginal revenue falling but positive. That is the first relationship that exists between them. And then, when total revenue is at its apex or maximum level, marginal revenue will be zero on that line, on the output line. And then, when total revenue begins to fall, marginal revenue will tend to be negative. So, that is, those are the three relationships that exist between total revenue and marginal revenue.